Hey guys, it's MC Fixit here. We're gonna be working on this towel rack that wants to fall off all the time. Uh, the first thing I would encourage you to do is go ahead and find one of those small Allen wrenches. We're gonna be using one that is 564 to see if you can tighten it up. I've already tried that and it doesn't help. You can see there is a gap. I can almost put, I'm in a good chunk of my finger on both sides. Uh, this is just not set up right. So I'm gonna walk through exactly how to do that, all the tools, the supplies. We're gonna be having to put new holes in the wall and fill in old holes um, and just making it done correctly. And so that way it really does hold up. This is a double towel rack, uh, which is super nice because then you can be drying two towels at the same time. So we're probably gonna move it up a couple of inches as well, just because down off to the side here is the toilet and you don't wanna hit your head on that as well. So if it's up a couple of more inches, it will actually help and you won't hit the toilet paper roll with your towel when it's all the way down. So let me go ahead and get that out of the way and kind of show you a little bit more on what that looks like. I mean, it just kind of comes off on one side. Now I have gone ahead and tightened it down with the Allen wrench, uh, but I'll go through all the tools, all the supplies right now so you know exactly what you need for this project. Here are the tools and the supplies that you'll need. Um, I use two different types of drills, one with a Phillips, one with a drill bit. Um, you can also use a screwdriver as well when you're taking off and mounting. Um, an Allen wrench that is a 564 Allen wrench. This has got a whole set of different size Allen wrenches, but it does help because it is pretty small. I mean, that's the smallest one on this whole pack. Um, I like to use a ball ping hammer to knock in the old areas. Um, I then go ahead, this is a three inch scraper and use spackling. I do like the pink dry time indicator. It's not necessarily faster, um, but it does allow it to go from pink to white and then white, you know, it's ready. Um, I do like that because sometimes I get too, uh, too anxious and it doesn't have the proper dry time that it really does need. Uh, I used a little bit of blue tape, that's three inch thick tape uh, to keep my mess down, especially when I'm sanding. This is a sanding block 220 grit sandpaper. You'll need whatever paint it is. Uh, I do mark my paint cans with a Sharpie as well. So I know that that's bathroom. So when I'm looking through, I can easily find that. This is a inch and a quarter paintbrush. It's kind of a cheap one, but doesn't really matter because you're only painting two squares about three inches. Um, you'll want a pair of needle nose pliers. These are really good for getting out the old mollies, a Sharpie, a tape measure, uh, preferably one that you know how to read. That is good. Uh, lots of different varieties out there. Um, so if you're really bad with fractions, get one that does have the inches or the fractions on that. And then also I use these kind of mollies. These ones uh, you kind of knock in, uh, then you begin to screw and they go into the drywall and hold really well. Uh, on the package, it does say it's up to 50 pounds. So four of those, that's 200 pounds of pressure you can put on that. Um, and also when you're drilling in, you do want to make sure it's smaller than your drill bit. So as you're pushing that in, it does allow it to expand and do that correctly. Um, I used four Phillips screws that were already a part of that, but if not, you do want to make sure the Phillips screws are a little bit bigger. They go right inside there. You just screw them down in. Pretty awesome concept. Whoever invented that, thank you. Uh, I also use some paper towels. It kind of does help when you're cleaning up the drywall and if you spill any paint or anything like that. So the first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is use that uh, 564 and uh, go ahead and loosen this thing up to get it out. And these are not as easy to use. I could not find the original Allen wrench uh, for this one. So I did have to use kind of a multi-tool. I need to get something that where it's like little screwdrivers with Allen wrenches cause I hate these things, but we'll have to, bear through it at the end as well. Let's see, nope, not yet. Should be soon because I can feel it kind of coming off. There it goes. So this is how this one, I knew that was gonna happen. So these just literally put into each other. And so what's happening when you're screwing, so what's happening when you're screwing that down is this little screw comes up and down and it tightens down on this. You can see it looks like there probably was a previous one on there and these brackets are just loose. So we're gonna go ahead and spin these off of there, uh, go ahead and fill the holes and uh, just move it up a couple of inches and get a really good measurement uh, to make this thing perfect.
And you do want to save these, all of this, because we will use the screws probably again. They look like they're in good shape as long as they fit um, the new uh, mollies. So go ahead and get yourself a pair of needle nose pliers. It just pulls out so easily. Right there. If you are having some issues, you normally can kind of pinch it and then spin it. And sometimes that does help make these come out a little better. And if they don't come out, here's a little trick. You can push them in since we're going to fill it. I do have to do that occasionally. I don't always try to do that, but we'll just do it on both of those. Just push it all the way through. And uh, that kind of fell down into the wall, which is not a real big deal. Uh, then I like to use a ball peen hammer, this round part right here. And just go ahead and kind of knock in that whole area because this helps push it down and in. So we can get a nice, a nice big flat area. We're going to use spackling. It's a dry tech spackling and uh, go ahead and open that up. And I'm going to use a three inch scraper. I'm going to get quite a bit and I'm just going to put it over it. We're going to do this a couple of different times, but you do want to let it dry between each and every one of them. Same thing here. Go ahead and put it on. I did go too aggressive. I'll be honest with this. I should have not gone so aggressive. This will probably take a little bit more work because I kind of got aggressive. And go ahead and clean that up pretty well. And uh, we'll go ahead and let that dry as we're doing the rest of it. So in this video, you'll start to see that turn white. That tells you that that coat is done, which is kind of convenient. It is that fast dry. And because it is, go ahead and hammer back on your lid. That way it works in the future. So the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and kind of put this back together. I know it kind of fell apart, which they do that. And we're going to measure from this right here, dead center to dead center. And that will give us the exact here. Uh, then we'll have to work with it to get it nice and level. But the first thing to do is go ahead and get that distance. So we'll go ahead and get that distance. And I like to use kind of the center of that one in the center of this one, which is exactly 23 inches, which is super helpful. So it'll be 23 inches from center to center. Now remember, I said I'm gonna go up a couple of inches and I think I'm gonna go over a little bit as well. And so I'm just gonna draw this line right here first. And then this one right here. I think because I want them both the same height, Gonna put this against the ground. And since we're so close to 63 right here, there's no magic number, but we'll just go with 63 on both of these. And so that is why I put those little X's in. And again, you always double check your math, 23. And you may choose to do this at a different level same thing with this, perfect, and 63. So that will be where I put the two sets of brackets. So I do want to show you this real quick. So it will sit in like this in the wall. It's kind of hard to show you, but there's a little notch on this. And uh, then this is that screw that goes up. And uh, so as it catches, it will help hold it up. So I'm gonna put this top mark actually on here. And so it might be just a fraction lower than 63 inches uh, when we're done, but that's gonna be the goal right there on both of those. So something I'll go ahead and do just to make sure I get a really good start, go ahead and just press that in. 
and same thing there. That'll just help when I go ahead and get started. Another thing I'm gonna do is use a little bit of blue painter's tape for just a moment and put a little bit on each side right there because I do wanna mark that lower hole. So once I think that looks nice and level, go ahead and mark that bottom hole. Sorry, I have a cap in my mouth. Probably shouldn't talk with a cap in my mouth, but you know, life happens. And do be careful, you can kind of mess that up, but we're gonna be sanding it down a few different times so it'll all work okay. So I'm gonna be using a kind of a different style molly than the other ones where this is called a self-tapping. So you will drill into about right here and then you will use a uh, <clears throat> Phillips screwdriver and you will go ahead and screw that in. So you'll drill into about right there with a drill and then screw it in the west rest of the way. These things are supposed to hold up to 50 pounds a piece. So if that's four of them, supposedly 200 pounds, give or take. I do know some people who actually nail these in uh, straight in. Um, I've had some issues with it just not being perfect. Um, so I'll go ahead and put just a small drill hole. So you wanna make sure that it is smaller than that. And so we'll go ahead and do our best to line that up really good. We'll go ahead and take them. And again, you just kind of push them into the wall and then start screwing them in. Does make some fun noises, but they line up really nice and tight and centered. I am putting a little bit of force to get them started. Uh, then go ahead and turn them. Same thing with this over here. I'm not certain what exactly makes it squeak so loud, if it's just the drywall or if it's whatever, but they do kind of squeak a little. Okay, now those are nice and lined up exactly how we want them. And these screws I'm just going to reuse. And I am gonna do these by hand. Um, you could use a drill but I just want to really make sure everything's lined up nice. Takes a few extra seconds, but really I think it's worth it to make sure you're doing what you need. Went about a third of the way in. Go ahead and get the bottom one started as well. And as I said, you can start to see it's turning a little bit white around the edges, which is exactly what we want to see on that. And this does have a little bit of play up and down, which is actually a good thing. Um, we may have to come back and tighten that down just a little bit if we are off at all to make sure it's perfectly level. Um, but they do give you just a little bit of extra room for play in there, nice and solid. Go ahead and do the same thing to the other side. Again, watch out for where you just put drywall. You do wanna be careful with that. Once you're about a third of the way in, go ahead and hit your bottom one up. And again, you see this has a little bit of movement side to side and up and down. That's a good thing again, that just make sure you can uh, get it nice and tight and lined up where it needs to be. I'm gonna go ahead after I tighten this down just a little bit more, make sure I like where it's at. I'm actually gonna loosen this one up just a little bit. Get it a little bit more centered. That's better. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and begin to put this back on. So one thing you'll want to do is make sure that this is on the bottom, and I'm gonna go ahead and back that out um, to where it's completely flush, because we need to get it latched on there. The other thing is, is that the two holes are facing this direction. Really important. All of that is correct there. And then we'll go ahead and tighten this down. 
this is where it can get real easy to get this all messy as you are just a few centimeters away from where you just patched everything. And so this is kind of a tedious process, but just take your time, go slow. And you can already see there's not a big quarter inch gap at the top of this. And so as that begins to disappear, you know you're kind of getting closer, which is a good thing. It does take quite a few revolutions to make this work. And if I had a regular Allen wrench, I think it would go a quick bit quicker just because there's not a whole lot of space I can turn with this device. But it also lets you know exactly what size at least this model is with that uh, 564. So that's starting to get nice and tight on the top. I'm gonna go ahead and give it just another maybe two revolutions, which is not really <laughs> probably a real revolution. And as it gets up in there, it is harder to find exactly where you need to be. And that is so much more secure. So now that this one is nice and tight, it seems counterintuitive, but you're actually going to loosen it back up just a little bit. So it has some wiggle room to assist the other one. I just wanted to make sure it all lined up properly. And so again, you want that wiggle room, which is what we didn't want before, but you'll need to put these pieces in and tie down the other side at the same time. So let's go ahead and begin working on this side. So we're gonna go ahead and put this in. Now remember that right side is a little loose. That's important to have. So you have that extra bit of wiggle room because um, it's kind of a blind procedure from here on out. I'm gonna have to loosen it up even a bit more. But I did wanna make sure it was tight because uh, that was our problem before. Didn't wanna do all this. Uh, I didn't have the same problem existing that we had before. It's really, really close. Okay, that just fell into place. Now we have a lot of tightening down to do on both sides. Once it kind of gets on there, then you're good. It's normally when you start can't start to see the uh, little set screw on the bottom is normally when you're probably pretty good. So that side is nice and locked in. Go ahead and come back to this side. Okay, that's real secure on both sides. Gonna just do it one or two more times for each of them. Go ahead and give it a good little wiggle. And that's exactly what we want it to do. So go ahead and pull this back. Um, I still have a lot of uh, drywalling still to do, but that part is complete. I hope that was helpful for you. So go ahead and take some blue tape, about six or seven inches worth. And then what I like to do is I like to put it on, actually you can fold it in half first. Fold it in half and put it a couple of inches below. And what this will do is help catch anything that falls. So again, about six, seven inches. Same thing here. and it just becomes a nice little sturdy area. This is about a 220 grit sandpaper. And I'm gonna go on the top, I'm gonna to go on the bottom and the sides to try to begin to get it flat.
And so this has a little bit of imperfections on this side. This side's starting to feel really good. So I will go ahead and put a little bit more on. So I'm gonna put the majority of it in the center and kind of work it out the other directions. And that's pretty good for that one. And then we'll wait a little bit longer and then I'll do that one after that completely dries. So now that both of these are dry, completely, especially the one on the right, I'm gonna just go ahead and touch up the one on the left. There'll be very little sanding I have to do for this one because I just put that very, very thin coat on and fanned it out. Uh, then we'll go ahead and move over to the other one. And this is that same process. We're just gonna simply sand it down and get it nice and smooth, really focusing on starting from the middle and kind of working your way out to the edges. So you can get a wet paper towel like I'm doing here and going back and forth and it will actually pull up some of the dust but also even some of the actual spackling and it does actually kind of help smooth it out. This is a little trick I learned a couple of years ago. Uh, it does help make my projects a lot smoother and a lot less noticeable. Um, sometimes you have to go back like on the one on the left it's got some extra paste on it um, so we'll just get some clean paper towels and uh, from there you can uh, just go ahead and just continue to wipe that off and it'll be pretty much ready to go um, you can also pull off the tape just like this um, be careful because you can make a mess but take that right over to your dumpster and uh, just go ahead and throw that away and we'll do the same thing to the other side just pick that straight up off of there do be careful you kind of can fold it the other direction but sometimes it's just easier to just take it and uh, pitch it and you saw how much dry drywall dust we just saved from cleaning up off the ground totally worth it for like a foot worth of blue painters tape um, and then you just go ahead and just touch up the rest of that get that nice and cleaned up ready to be uh, painted Really the last step here is to take your paint, make sure you shake it for about five minutes, uh, maybe longer, I already was shaking this pretty good, but this is just to show you, make sure you shake this. Uh, then when you open it up, you do have the ability to just use the lid um, to be able to paint, and I'm using a one and one quarter inch paintbrush, and uh, I'll go over this at least once, if not twice, depending on how dark the color is from that white. You may have to do it even three times if it's a very, very dark gray or something like that. Also make sure you give enough time for your paint to dry. And if you have any other spots that need touched up, you have the paint out, go ahead and do it. There was one right above the rack and one up high. And there's a couple over to my left I'll get in a second. Uh, but it's just helpful. You already have that paint out. If you have any nicks or dents or anything or another part to patch, just do it while you got everything out and ready. So we're back for the final coat. It looks really good. And so same thing, mix up your paint. Doesn't take a whole lot. I like to do nice wide brush strokes with the only place I'm really touching down with any firmness is in the center. This will allow it to kind of fan out and uh, mix together really well with the paint that's already there. And also if you see any other spots that you may want to hit up, Go ahead and put a second coat on those. I know I had one right there and there's one up here just out of the camera view. But if this was helpful, please like and subscribe. Please comment if you do have any questions. Again, let this sit for at least two hours. That's what the directions on this bare paint are. Yours might be just a touch longer than that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you haven't done so yet, subscribe, uh, like this. If you do have any questions, put it in the comment section below. Thanks again for watching.